So that family trip was ruined. We want to now bring in industry expert Stuart Kyron from thecruiseguy.com for his insight. So, all right, you're the cruise guy. Uh, did who? So who? Where? How far up do you put the the fault here? The blame? Is it at, with Carl? Is it with the healthcare worker who should have known better? None of the above. All of the above. Hi, Kelly. Well, I, I think I, I'd like to know who the dunderhead was at the, you know, either the CDC, the hospital, or the healthcare employee, because this is probably the dumbest thing you could have ever done uh, to have gone. I mean, Carnival didn't know anything until Wednesday. So we certainly, you know, when the CDC contacted them that, hey, you've got a, a passenger on board that uh, may have come in contact with the Ebola virus. I mean, it's just incredibly, uh, you know, it's just inconceivable that this person would, would take a Caribbean cruise after coming into contact inside the incubation period. But the good news was that the medical teams on board Carnival immediately took action, isolated, quarantined the passenger, and notified the passengers uh, about what was going on. And unfortunately, they did miss two ports of call. Uh, they did offer them the $200 shipboard credit and a 50% off future cruise credit, which is certainly above and beyond anything that Carnival was required to do. I am. Um Stuart, I, I've never been on a cruise, so I don't know what, what the lead-up is like when you're, you know, approaching those days and, and weeks in advance of getting onto a ship. Uh, do they uh, send out any kind of questionnaire? Do they ask passengers if they've had any recent health issues before they get on a cruise? And if not, will this change the protocol in, in how the whole business is run? Well, Scott, I'll tell you that the cruise lines are vigilant about with their health care uh, questionnaires, and that's actually done at the time that passengers are checking in and passengers that are visually impaired they could be sweating uh... they are sent for secondary screening uh... i'm absolutely certain that they will be doing additional screening and that any passengers that have had any uh... contact uh... with the uh... western african nations or uh... people that have been impacted by ebola within the last twenty one days those passengers will be denied boarding i mean no cruise line is going to take uh, allow passengers visually, visibly get on board a ship that could negatively impact the experience of three, of four thousand people. Stuart, just a last question because the cruise industry has been trying to already deal with image problems related to all the sicknesses they have on, on board that are well publicized. But do you expect this to create any longer term drop in uh, ticket sales or uh, an increase in discounting, anything like that? I, I absolutely don't think it will have any impact because this was something that they couldn't control. They're going to be vigilant in, in protecting the passengers. I mean, I've been on 211 cruises myself, and I would not I would not hesitate getting on a cruise ship tomorrow. Um, but it, it's, it's something that people need to be uh, aware of. But uh, I'd rather okay. go on a cruise right now than get on an airplane. All right, Stuart Chiron, <laughs> thank you very much. I think Scott feels a little differently here. But it's just a personal cruise preference thing, right? No, I just never been on one. Yeah, I, no, I would go on one. Oh, you would? So yeah. it's not a, just a general buy -in. Oh, no, 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 no. I would go on one. I just hadn't been, so I didn't know what the deal was. Well, the holidays are coming up. Hint to Scott's family. Breaking news on Atlantic City's Taj Mahal Casino now with our Morgan Brennan. Morgan? Hi, Kelly. Well, a federal bankruptcy judge has just voted.